So AMD is responding to Nvidia's release of the RTX 4080. The reviews are all out today if you guys have probably seen them from the various channels. AMD is doing two things to respond that I've seen. First, they're doing like pre-Black Friday sales already on their existing GPUs. Remember, the RDNA 3 is coming out next month and that's what we're going to talk about today. But if you guys have seen some of these GPU sales, I don't know. It looks like the 6950 XT is at $849. You can get it right now in stock from AMD. They have different pairings with different CPUs. Remember, they have all the incentive in the world to get rid of these Ryzen 7000 CPUs. They did not sell very well at all during launch and during the last several weeks. Even Intel seems to have been doing better on the CPU side recently. Maybe the platform costs are just way too expensive. But 6950 XT is still putting up some respectable numbers. And for $849, it's going to be $50 less than the 7900 XT, which will be the better GPU. So you might as well just wait until next month. If you can get it or not, that's going to be an entirely different story. But if you get it and you compare them, $50 is definitely worth it to get into the new generation. And this is where we really start to get into some murky waters. In response to this RTX 4080 launch, AMD has also released some new benchmarks with their own numbers for a few more games with both ray tracing on and ray tracing off. I'm sure you guys have been, you know, reading all the reviews. Generally, if you look at everything and you summarize it, the 4080 is just way too expensive for what it is. And we're talking about the base MSRP of $1199. That's a really, really big price increase over last generation's 3080 at $699. And now let's hear a word from our sponsor. Priced pretty good is a Windows CD key. Today's video sponsor is going to be VIP-CDKDeals.com. Very simple process. You can get a Windows 10 Pro CD key. And remember to use code CC20 for a nice discount. And now back to the video. So most of the 4080 reviews, it's just way too expensive. You're basically paying $1 for every 1% of performance uplift, which really isn't that great of a deal. The 3080 was fantastic for $699, as was the 1080 Ti in the previous generation a long time ago. But the 4080 at $1199 is just way too expensive. And there are other factors at play here due to this high pricing, like a lot of RTX 3000 GPUs still in stock. That's why, remember earlier in the video, we mentioned how AMD Black Friday sales, they're trying to get rid of that stock of 6950, 6900 XTs, which by the way, that 6900 XT at $649, that's really not that bad of a deal. I mean, it is going to be close in price to the 7900 XT, but the caveat here is, are you going to be able to find them in stock? So if you can find them or not, here are AMD's and some of these performance numbers for the 7900 XT and the XT. X. Now, this is something that I've said before, and some people didn't really like it, but I really do think it's true. AMD seems to have sort of replaced the 7800 XT, or anyway, what should have been the 7800 XT with the 7900 XT. Look at these performance numbers, for example. Take here Resident Evil Village. A 6950 XT, 124 FPS, seems pretty fair. Then 7900 XT, you're going all the way up to 157 FPS. FPS. That's a pretty nice performance uplift. But then look at the 79 XTX. Here you're going to 190 FPS. That's a tremendous difference between the 7900 XT and the 7900 XTX. If I was a layman and I was looking at sort of just the GPU name, 7900 XT versus XTX, you would think the XTX is just a little bit overclocked version of the 7900 XT. Maybe it's just a little better that's what the naming scheme really makes you want to think. But much like Nvidia tried to do with two 4080s, a 12 gigabyte and a 16 gigabyte, which were completely different GPUs, by the way, this is what AMD is trying to do. This is a completely different tier of GPU. You can't look at these performance numbers and tell me the 7900 XT is basically the same or just a little bit underclocked or a little bit, you know, lesser cut down version of the 7900 XTX. It's a completely different different version. I think AMD saw what Nvidia did with both 4080s and that wasn't very popular and they figured they can
could get away with pricing $899 for this particular GPU. And of course, in order to do so and maintaining sort of a, you know, a good sense of price and in the public eye, making it seem like they're not overpricing a 7800 XT, which by the way, the 6800 XT used to be 649 MSRP. So it'd be hard for them to raise it this much. But if they call it a 7900 XT and they leave the $999 price of the XTX, then it seems like they're playing some type of pricing strategy here and basically just changing the name of the 7900 XT. I don't care what the last generation looked like in comparison to each other. This generation, the 7900 XT is not the same class GPU as the XTX. You would think that that small name change would mean a little bit of an overclock, but it doesn't. It's a completely higher tier GPU by a significant margin. I mean, just look at these AMD provided graphs, which will likely end up being fairly accurate in the real world when we do get, you know, independent performance reviews. It slots in like almost perfectly right in the middle of the previous 6950 XT and the 7900 XTX, making you think that that GPU should really have been called a 7800 XT. It really makes complete sense. I mean, look at these numbers. This is like what you would have expected to see with a 6900 XT versus a 6800. In fact, if you guys remember, a 6800 XT was not that far off in terms of performance from a 6900 XT. Much like, uh, you know, the 3080 wasn't a huge difference from a 3090. Last generation, they were much closer. Now, you're going to tell me a 7900 XT, which is supposed to be the same class of GPU as per its name as an XTX. I don't really think so. This is obviously AMD just messing around with the names much like Nvidia did. They literally just switched around the product stack a little bit. That's very obvious what's going on here. If they can call it a 7800 XT or not, it's effectively a 7800 XT and we can tell by the performance difference. And then of course, if they release a 7800 XT, you're going to expect it to land right in the middle of basically the 6950 XT and the 7900 XT. Maybe even a little less. It may be closer to the 6950 XT, I would imagine. And then they could price that eventual 7800 XT probably closer to the, what the original MSRP was, like 649 if they try to keep prices at least similar on the face of it. And then that would probably sell a lot better than the 7900 XT. I think most people can agree that if you're looking at these AMD GPUs, use next month, you definitely want to go for the XTX. For $100 more, look at the performance difference that you're getting. It's almost as big of a gap as it is between the 7900 XT and the previous generation. That's a pretty massive difference. And here, we're only talking about the traditional rasterization performance. These are going to be at 4K settings. Look at Cyberpunk's number. This is a difficult game to run, even without ray tracing turned on or without any of, you know, DLSS or FSR. I mean, obviously the 4090 definitely performs better even compared to this, but it's also going to be more expensive. You can say that the XTX does seem to perform fairly fair compared to its price point compared to the 4090. It's definitely a pretty good bang for the buck as we can see here. Now that's starting to make the 7900 XT seem like definitely not that good of a deal. For $100 less, you're getting considerably less performance and the store continues when we actually look at ray tracing performance. That's an area where AMD has traditionally had a lot of trouble in. Now, look at these numbers. One very important thing for you guys to be aware of. Look at what it says on the graph. FSR on and off. FSR is going to be an upscaling technology. It's a little different than DLSS, which is more, you know, AI super sampling. Of course, Nvidia definitely banks on AI, artificial intelligence, and the Nvidia GPUs themselves to really be able to do DLSS. That's why DLSS 3.0 really needs the powerful hardware of, you know, the new RTX 40 series, but AMD FSR typically will run on much different hardware. So here, look at these numbers. Let's imagine on the bottom, that's FSR off. 
the ray tracing numbers are actually pretty miserable. For most of the games like Cyberpunk, Hitman 3, Dying Light 2 that they show here, the frames per second number are well below 60 frames per second. Most of them don't even go above 30 frames per second. Even Hitman 3 only hits 38 FPS. And then Resident Evil Village, which is a little bit easier to run, is going to be 135 FPS. Of course, looking at all these numbers, you have to turn on FSR to get anything playable. And then everything uh, comfortably goes above 60 frames per second, even though the 7900 XT barely hits it. I mean, it's doing 57 frames per second in Cyberpunk, and it's doing a lot less compared to the 7900 XTX, which is also kind of struggling. It's really not that big of a difference. Here is where you can see that AMD is going to have a pretty tough time against NVIDIA. In terms of ray tracing, it's something more and more people are actually using, turning on in the newest games. So it's not something that used to be really a throwaway item before. It's definitely something that counts now. I mean, if you're going to be buying a really expensive GPU, especially at these prices, $1,000 or close to $1,000 plus, don't you want to think that these people that buy high-end GPUs, they're doing it to turn on all of the eye candy. They want to play on Ultra, see everything in its glory with really high frames. And part of that eye candy is going to be ray tracing, which is going to give you pretty awesome lighting effects. It's going to give you shadows. It's definitely going to make the world more immersive. And it's going to be the very definition of sort of the next generation eye candy. So it's very important for these GPUs to be able to do ray tracing. Like it or not, when it first came out, NVIDIA GPUs were laughed at a little bit because they weren't really implemented very well. But it's been a few years since ray tracing has been around, and it's definitely caught up in many cases. Many games are using them now to great effect. So a GPU, in my opinion, that's really high end, needs to have good ray tracing performance. So this is where we are today. We get a little idea of what the 7900 XTX is going to be doing and the NVIDIA 4080, pretty much what we expected. Power draw isn't really that bad compared to the 3080. In fact, it's 320 watts, which is pretty good. Performance is good, but the price is really high for that GPU. It's going to remain to be seen if this XTX, which is definitely going to challenge the 4080 in a very positive way, two things can potentially keep that down. First, the price of the AIB models. Sure, these reference XTX GPUs from AMD are 999, but are reference GPUs is going to be as much or more than a 4080. I think they are, and that's going to present a problem for AMD. And secondly, ray tracing performance. Are gamers going to care that the 4080 is really on another level compared to the 7900 XTX? Here's the kicker. It comes back to the price. At $999 versus $1199, many gamers will be able to look right through that ray tracing performance and be happy with rasterization. They're going to be able to overlook it. But if this GPU ends up being basically the price of a 4080 because of the AIB real world pricing, NVIDIA then I think is going to win because most people at around the same price, even though if the rasterization might be slightly less on the 4080 in some titles, they're probably still going to go for NVIDIA because ray tracing will be better, content creation will be better, 3D rendering other areas that may encompass a wider diversity and group of people generally still will prefer NVIDIA. And if the pricing is the same, I have to say the 4080 will still be preferred over this. But if AMD can keep that pricing down as close as possible to $1,000, $200 under the 4080, even for some of the AIB models, if they have base AIB models that come close to that price, then I think AMD can really, really be very competitive because a lot of you, you know, my viewers, myself included, everybody's excited for what AMD is going to be bringing to the table. All right, guys, so let me know what you think down below. Remember to subscribe. If you're waiting in line already for the 4080, let us know, and I'll see you guys on the next video.